quick introduction, my name is Tyler Mahan Co. And at this point, I think it's fair to say I know more about George Jones and Tammy Wynette than anyone alive on the planet right now. For those of you who are not aware, I make a podcast called Cocaine and Rhinestones about the history of country music in the 20th century. And the story of George Jones and Tammy Wynette was the focus of the entire second season. That decision was made entirely because of how important George and Tammy are to country music and because telling their story the way I told it provided an opportunity to discuss a lot of the non-musical history of modern society that is necessary to fully understand the genre of country music. If you want to know more about that, that's where you'll find it, Cocaine and Rhinestones. Now, the TV series George and Tammy had not gone into production when I announced my plan to tell that story, but because of the timing of all this and because Jessica Chastain tweeted about listening to Cocaine and Rhinestones as research to play Tammy, there are now a lot of people who assume I was somehow involved with making the TV series and an even greater number of people who want to know what I think about the TV series. So I figured I'd upload a review video for each episode as the show airs to try answering as many of these questions as I can at once. Uh, probably worth mentioning that I was asked by a couple of entertainment publications if I wanted to review the series for them in an official capacity as a critic, I chose to decline due to the optics. I don't regard this TV series as competition for the work that I do or vice versa, but I'm certain anything negative I say about it will be framed as if that is the case. So I'm definitely not going to take a paycheck to review it. I'm also not going to monetize these videos or spend any time adding fancy graphics or clips of the TV series or any of the other bullshit I'd do if I was trying to make money. This is just me talking about a TV show for however many folks want me to talk about a TV show. And if you don't know anything about me, I guess I should probably let you know up front that I sincerely do not care if anyone doesn't like any of the things I'm about to say. All right, George and Tammy, episode one, the race is on. First thing first, it makes no sense that Walton Goggins is in this TV show and he is not playing George Jones. Uh, anyone who knows anything about Jones and has seen the show Righteous Gemstones can tell that Goggins is obviously doing an exaggerated version of Jones for Uncle Baby Billy and he could have crushed this role. He definitely looks a lot more like Jones than Michael Shannon does, which even weirdly had attention called to it in this episode. When Tammy's daughters tell Shannon he does not look like a possum, a thing nobody ever said to George Jones because George Jones did look like a possum, which is how he got that nickname. Uh, that being said, I think Shannon is mostly doing a good job of delivering Jones' personality. Despite the writer's tendency to give Jones too much of a rock star attitude and overconfidence. For example, in the scene where he drops by Tammy's recording session and acts like a dick to George Ritchie for no reason, Jones would never have done something like that in such a situation because he was a painfully shy and introverted person. That is a fundamental flaw in the way they are depicting him. As far as Jessica Chastain, I think she's perfectly cast as Tammy, but it's already obvious the writers are going to run with the fabricated version of Tammy that she and others worked so hard to present to the world much to the detriment of her career, rather than try to get at her true personality, which would be much more complicated and messy, but also much more interesting to watch than just having her be the victim she pretended to be. A lot of the complaints people are going to have about this show will boil down to that's not what really happened. 
And sure, that's an accurate criticism, but anyone who's ever watched a biopic on a musical artist should by now know to expect the facts will be misconstrued. Getting Tammy's entire character wrong is obviously going to become a pretty huge problem the deeper we get into the story, but I actually thought most of the fictions they came up with for this first episode made a lot of sense. The biggest thing they changed is making it seem as though Tammy and Jones began working together and then Don Chapel used that to try getting Jones to listen to his songs. In reality, it happened exactly the other way around. Tammy only met Jones because she was tagging along when Don went to pitch Jones some songs, including When the Grass Grows Over Me, which Jones did record. And by literally every account of that meeting that exists, Jones paid no attention to Tammy, and she was really pissed off about being ignored by her musical hero. However, Despite Don Chapel being the one who originally became successful, Tammy's later success was on a much bigger level, and Don was guilty of trying to use her success to further his own career. Rewriting that history the way they did quickly communicates this aspect of his personality to the audience, so makes total sense to me. But it also serves the purpose of covering up the fact that Tammy is the one who used her husband's access to George Jones in order to intentionally pursue a professional and romantic relationship with Jones. Something I found interesting about this, in the scene at Tammy and Don's house when Don tells Jones Tammy is a conniving opportunist, something like that, that is a true thing to say about the real Tammy Wynette, but it seems fairly obvious that's not a side of her we're going to see very much of as this narrative plays out. As you can tell, I'm not really interested in sitting here and fact-checking every little thing about this show. In fact, one of the things I'm doing while watching is trying to pretend I don't know anything about this history in order to judge the show strictly as a piece of entertainment, since I would imagine that's how the vast majority of viewers are going to approach this. What's strange is doing that little mental exercise kind of made the show worse for me. Uh, near the beginning of the episode, we see Billy Sherrill, who, by the way, looks way too much like the actor cast as Don Chapel, so I'm sure that's going to confuse a lot of folks. We see Billy Sherrill take Tammy to George Jones' hotel room. But we haven't been told who Billy is or why he matters. Then when we are told that in the recording studio scene closer to the end of the episode, they make sure to point out that Billy Sherrill is not George Jones' producer and they've never worked together before. Why would Billy even know what hotel room Jones was staying in, let alone be able to just walk right in while Jones is still passed out from the night before? The only way that makes any kind of sense is if the viewer is bringing to the show an awareness of how important Billy Sherrill was in the Nashville music industry at this time. In trying to watch the show like I didn't know anything about the story, it really brought into focus how often these writers are assuming not just a passing familiarity with the story, but a pretty deep knowledge of it. When Jones goes over to Tammy's house for dinner and gives an offhand comment about his mother always calling him Glenn, we don't know that George's father is also named George, and even in the scene, are left to put that together for ourselves instead of keeping up with the action as the scene continues. Ultimately, it seems like this script is a collection of references to things about the story that do matter, but without any attempt to go beneath the surface into why those things matter. For example, I would love to know what most of the people who watched this first episode believe it meant to have Jones introduced with a scene of him drunkenly ripping up $100 bills and throwing them in a toilet. Why does everyone think he was doing that? 
the show certainly hasn't told us why. So I would be curious to know how that tracks to basically everyone. And the main question I kept asking myself was, who is this made for? Because if it's made for people who do not already know this story, I'm not so sure they're doing a great job of telling the story or communicating why anyone should care about it. If it's made for people who do know the story, then it seems like they forgot the main reason anyone cares about it is that George Jones and Tammy Wynette made some of the best country music of all time. And it's pretty clear that neither Michael Shannon nor Jessica Chastain should be attempting to sing those songs. I will admit that this is a pre-existing pet peeve of mine. My opinion is that actors should never be allowed to perform their own vocals when they are playing the part of an iconic singer. This is even more of a problem when you're talking about an actor who doesn't have a background in even listening to country music, let alone performing it. You take that actor and have them attempt to sing country music. There's a tendency to assume that country is a simple genre and it's easy to sing or play. That is an assumption that you will quickly have corrected for you should you attempt to perform it. This has been a problem in movies ever since Robert Altman's Nashville, an incredible film in which nearly every scene of an actor singing is so bad it is legitimately offensive to fans of country music. The only reason anyone knows or cares about the stories of country singers' lives is because they were extraordinarily good at singing. So it just makes no sense to take a song anyone can go and listen to in order to hear the way it's supposed to sound, then have an actor fail to deliver even a halfway competent rendition only for every other character in the scene to act as though it was mind-blowingly good. If anyone watching this video has never heard the original George Jones and Tammy Wynette recordings of the songs featured in this first episode, I cannot express how important it is to your understanding of the history of music that you immediately go listen to these songs. As I covered in Cocaine and Rhinestones, George Jones' original recording of The Race Is On was such an impressive feat as a vocalist that every single artist who has since tried to cover the song was forced to change it in some way in order to get a version of it on tape. There is a reason that George Jones is widely considered the greatest country singer to ever live. If you'd like to hear why, listen to his recording of a song named Mr. Fool. And it is going to be nothing less than absurd to continue watching every character in this TV show act as if Michael Shannon is performing anywhere near that level of excellence. If Michael Shannon brought this level of singing ability to Nashville in the mid-1950s, he would have wound up cleaning toilets for a living. But I will say that it does at least seem like Shannon has thought about the meaning of the lyrics he's singing, which is not a statement I can make for Jessica Chastain. When Bobby Braddock wrote the song D-I-V-O-R-C-E, he originally gave it a happy melody and sang it on the demo like it was a happy song because Braddock just has a weird sense of humor like that. Another songwriter named Curly Putman heard that demo and told Braddock he was never going to get that song recorded that way and he should change the melody to be sadder and sing it as if the lyrics made him sad. That's what he did and that's the version of the song that Tammy Wynette recorded. Watching Jessica Chastain do the song, it was almost like she kept slipping into the original happy delivery of the lyrics didn't really seem to be any emotional connection to the words, which would be bad enough, but she also happens to keep losing the rhythm of the song and delivering lyrics in the wrong spot, basically. And that makes it impossible to project the emotional power Tammy Wynette brought to a song as a vocalist. Same as with Shannon doing Jones, it is comical to watch Chastain flail through 
a lifeless and auto-tuned to shit karaoke version of a country song, only to have other characters pretend it's the greatest thing they've ever heard. I'm actually dreading the performances of songs I know are coming in future episodes, and all I can do is hope that at least some of the people watching this show who've never heard Jones or Wynette will take the time to go listen to the real thing. That's what I thought. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back next week to cover the second episode of George and Tammy.